How's it going, Diablo fans? So a lot of you have requested a Blizzard build, which is actually a boss killer. And, you know, since there's a lot of Blizzard builds out there which are doing, like, crazy stuff with Blue Rose and, you know, Meteor mix in, Star for Corona and all that garbage, which is just, like, all terrible, not working at all, I just thought I'm gonna give you a classic Blizzard build here, which is just doing pure Blizzard, like it's supposed to be. And this is purely the best Blizzard build. You already saw, like, all bosses one faced in the footage in the background running right now now but you can also do nightmare wards in like three minutes straight so it's really really easy just don't get tricked into like all these use blue rose use like meteor on top of it use like these crazy like x fall stuff like anything just don't do it please like this is the classic blizzard build this is the best blizzard build it works best you don't have to try all the other stuff believe me it's not good this is like the core blizzard build you can use it every single season it works the same every single season and this is the strongest all-round sorceress build every single season except for broken ball lightning last season I don't even need to explain a whole lot about this build. This is pretty much the simple sorceress build you can make. I don't know how people are making a scientific project out of Blizzard and, you know, making like 15 iterations about this build. This build has been exactly the same since season one. It is the easiest build. So I can explain it in like 20 seconds for you right now. So let's go. So you use Blizzard and you use the aspect of the frozen tundra and the glacial aspect. So your Blizzard spawns ice spike. These ice spikes do huge critical strike damage and kill all then to get the most out of the ice spikes you use burning synergy with the firebolt enchantment so your ice spikes are gonna crit like crazy they have a huge explosion radius and just gonna blow everything up your blizzard and your lightning spear are gonna freeze and stun everything so you're gonna have a fantastic time pushing through dungeons with this build and it's also the fastest boss killer build for sorcerers available that is already the entire explanation of this build not much more to say about this this is the most solid sorcerers build since season one and it is a really good all round it has great crowd control it pushes through dungeons very fast and it's the fastest boss killer and remember all the specific sections of this guide are in the description down below also you will find links to all of my other build guides there and now without further ado let's go right into the skill tree Taking a look at the skill tree, we put two into Firebolt since we use Firebolt Enchantment. And then for our core skills, we just put um, two points into Frozen Orb, into Enhanced Frozen Orb, and Destructive Frozen Orb. Um, we play this enchantment. We don't mainly play it for the damage. It's just a little bit of extra utility and a little bit of extra vulnerable. The damage of it is not that strong. If you really feel like it, you can also play Ice Shards, especially if you are a little bit lower on the damage end, if you don't have such strong gear already. You can definitely go into Ice Shards. It's going to do significantly more damage than Frozen Orb. So you would go into Ice Shards, into Enhanced Ice Shards, into um, Greater Ice Shards here. And then for our defensive skills, we just put one point into Flame Shield, one into Teleport, one into Ice Armor. And if you have Shaco, obviously, you can uh, redistribute these three points somewhere else. Then we max out Glass Cannon, one into Elemental Attunement. And then we go for Lightning Spear into Enhanced Lightning Spear and Invoke Lightning Spear for the stun. And also remember, Lightning Spear is our primary applicator for Vulnerable pretty much in this build. Then we put two into Align the Elements, three into a Mana Shield and three into Protection. Um, we spend a lot of mana, so we can definitely use Mana Shield. And Protection helps us to keep a barrier up for most of the time in this build. Um, we simply don't have like another point in Align the Elements. Um, this is one point you could redistribute, for example, if you had Shaco. But for now, we just go with two here. Then we put one point into Icy Veil and three points into Cold Front. Um, Cold Front really helps a lot to freeze stuff faster. I do not recommend going into Snap Freeze because we're just playing Blizzard with a low Lucky Hit chance. So the Lucky Hit chance is really low and this gives you like a 9% chance to instantly freeze, yes. But I wouldn't recommend using this at all. Then one into Blizzard, one into Enhanced Blizzard, one into Mage Blizzard. Blizzard itself doesn't do any damage, so we just need to put one point here. Then one into Inner Flames and three into Devouring Blaze. If you have three Devouring Blaze on your amulet, that's the best you can get. If you can't, don't have a Devouring Blaze amulet, you can definitely also get Glass Cannon or Hoarfrost. And then we put three into Permafrost, three into Hoarfrost, three into Icy Touch. This is just our damage passives here. Then we go Deep Freeze into Prime Deep Freeze and Supreme Deep Freeze. Um, deep Freeze helps us resetting our cooldowns. I don't really use it as a damaging ability. Um, most likely I just use it for resetting my cooldowns, but you can definitely use it to do damage. It actually does quite a lot. 
Then we put screen to fear research. This just helps with mana regeneration. Again, if you have like uh, Starless Skies, for example, you can also redistribute these three points. There's really a lot of points you can take out if you don't need the mana regeneration. I feel like it's nice having the mana regeneration right now. And then we put one into cause and current, three into conduction, and three into electrocution. Um, this just helps me a little bit with um, staying alive since um, we have lightning spear and teleport applying lightning damage. So we get a little bit of extra damage reduction here. And then also conduction gives us a little bit of extra movement speed because, you know, we are playing Blizzard. We are slow. We don't have the highest movement speed. We don't have a lot of teleport uptime. So it really helps if the lightning spears um, just give you like a little bit of a speed boost here and there. And also after teleporting, you usually get like a speed boost. And we really don't need these points anywhere else in this build. And then last but not least, we use Asus Ferocity. Um, Asus Ferocity is bugged right now, so it works for all damage, not just for fire damage. Um, if this gets fixed at some point, really, there's not many options you can do. Um, the only thing you can do pretty much is, well, you can uh, use Verse Mastery. Um, I don't think it's very good. It will be just like, you know, a little bit of damage reduction. But um, I wouldn't use Avalanche. We don't need the mana at all. And um, it's not going to increase our Blizzard damage at all, because Blizzard doesn't do any damage. It's the Ice Spikes, and it doesn't count for that. And Shatter, you know, maybe if mobs have like a buttload of HP, this will be nice. But in this build, we don't really need Shatter. So at this point, we're just playing Asus Ferocity. For the skills, we use Deep Freeze. Um, this mainly is used to reset our cooldowns, but you can also use it as a damaging ability. So let's say you don't have crazy good gear yet, and with the aspect of the Frozen Tundra, this actually does quite a bit of damage. So don't underestimate it. The Ice Spikes really do a lot of damage, and Deep Freeze also does a lot of damage itself. But if you have better gear and you want to go fast, you basically just use this to reset your cooldowns. Then Lightning Spear. Lightning Spear applies Vulnerable for us. And it also applies um, burning. Since we're playing Firebolt Enchantment, we need something to apply burning. So burning is only applied by direct damage. So Blizzard doesn't apply burning. Ice Spikes do not apply burning. So what does apply burning? Yes, you're right. Lightning Spear does apply burning. So this is really a primary ability here we have to use because this enables a lot of our synergy. Sure, we can apply burning with other abilities like, you know, Flame Shield and Teleport, but mainly Lightning Spear um, applies vulnerable and burning for us. This is a very important skill. So you want to cast it on cooldown whenever you engage a pack of mobs, you want to cast Lightning Spear. Then teleport just to get around faster, but it also applies burning. So if we teleport in a group of mobs, it applies burning. And it also gives us extra movement speed and extra um, damage reduction. Then flame shield. Um, in this build, well, we are not extremely tanky, but we are having a lot of crowd control, right? So with Blizzard, the, the beauty of this build is that you have hard crowd control on everything, right? You cast Blizzard, everything gets frozen and does nothing. So it has the strongest crowd, crowd control. We have Lightning Spear for stun and we have Blizzard for freeze. So we really have a lot of crowd control. But, you know, whenever you are out of Lightning Spears and, you know, you cannot, like, freeze the mobs fast enough or you're engaging a larger pack, you know, just pop Flame Shield and that's probably going to seal the deal for you. And Blizzard, um, speaking about that, Blizzard is our main damage ability. Again, Blizzard doesn't do damage by itself. We do it through the Ice Spikes. But still, we want to spam Blizzard, obviously. Then Ice Armor. Ice Armor also helps a lot for staying alive. First of all, it gives a barrier, which you know activates all our barrier synergy. But also, this gives quite a bit of extra... Um, barrier while casting because the damage is contributing to ice armor so in this build we can really use ice armor um, we don't need to use um, frost blades or anything in this build because we already have our cold damage for tar russia so ice armor is the best ability here for you to use i know there's a lot of people who are playing like you know meteor with like starfall corona in this build please just don't do it like that is just well let's not call it clickbait but you know it just looks good but it literally does nothing and we'll we already talked about it a little bit in the introduction. Please believe me, don't play um, Meteor and Blizzard together. It doesn't make any sense. Meteor scales terrible with all damage. Meteor has to be specifically scaled with um, certain types of damage, like, um, you know, Meteor damage, Fireball damage, and also, like, Fire damage. And Blizzard's Ice Spike and Meteor, they just don't work together. Don't play it. Play your Ice Armor. 
be secure. If you want to have something which looks nice, you can play Meteor, but it's going to be significantly weaker than just playing without Meteor here. Then, as already said, Firebolt Enchantment. Um, we need Firebolt Enchantment to enable Burning Synergy. Um, we have Devouring Blaze, so a main part of our damage and also damage reduction comes from Burning. So that's why we play Firebolt Enchantment. And also, we really don't need any other enchantment in this build. Yes, you could play Ice Shards instead of Firebolt, but you would do significantly less damage. And then last but not least, again, we don't really need this at all, but we need an enchantment, right? So let's take Frozen Orb enchantment. You know, it triggers quite a bit of Frozen Orbs. Frozen Orbs also apply Burning, which is pretty nice. They also do Vulnerable, like, from time to time. So it's an alright enchantment, but overall, the enchantments in the Blizzard build are not strong at all. The Blizzard build is pretty much pumping out pure damage, and the enchantments just see them as a bonus. You don't even need the enchantments to make this build work. They're more like, well, you have to choose them, and that's why we choose Frozen Orb, because we simply cannot have any better enchantment for this. Um, I feel like it's pretty weak, actually, in this build, but there's just nothing better to use. For our gear, this is quite, quite a budget build, actually. Like, you don't really need Uber Uniques. Like, you don't even really benefit from them at all. You don't need any, like, expensive, crazy, like, four out of four stats in this build. It pretty much doesn't matter all that much. Um, you just need to focus on a few core stats, and you're going to be good to go. So, first of all, for our helmet, um, we use Godslayer Crown. Well, why? First of all, it's cheap. Second of all, it gives us a nice damage boost every once in a while. It's not up all the time, but, you know, crowd control duration is nice together with Blizzard. We have max life, we have cooldown reduction, we have, you know, some additive damage, and we have, like, a nice multiplicative damage, like, um, when we pull those mobs. So it's, like, a very, very nice item. If you have Shaco, obviously you can play Shaco. You're actually going to have a little bit less damage, but, you know, you're going to have more life and more survivability, so there's absolutely nothing wrong with playing Shaco. You can also, if you don't have God Slayer, you can just play a regular helmet with... Um, you know, with crawl control duration, maximum life, cooldown reduction, and probably intelligence or something like that. So you can definitely also do that. Um, I feel like Godslayer Crown is the best helm you can play here because you simply don't need anything special in the helm slot. Um, I already talked about, you know, people like tricking you into playing this with Star for Corona and Meteor. Please just don't do this. It is just terrible. It is just good visuals, but it doesn't do any damage. You have to spend like nine skill points into um, having Meteor maxed out. And the Meteor itself is not going to do more damage than a single Ice Spike. So really, it's just not a good build. Don't do it. Rather do the Godslayer Crown. It's going to be much better, believe me. Um, then for a chess piece, we just play a defensive chess piece here. Um, if you have a high roll Juggernaut's Aspect, then you can get away with a single percent armor roll. So as you can see, I have a 5.7 uh, Juggernaut's Aspect. It also works with a 5.5, .5, but you need a, a relatively high rolled one to um, get away to get your armor cap with just one armor roll. So as you can see, I have 14.4k armor here, and this is my only percent armor roll together with the Juggernaut's Aspect. Then you want to have maximum life and you can have like two random damage reduction stats on your chest piece. It doesn't even matter. You can have one and also like intelligence. It's really not so important here. For our gloves, you want to have attack speed, critical strike chance, intelligence, and ranks of frozen orb. Ranks of frozen orb doesn't really do a whole lot, so it's a like completely optional stat. Intelligence is nice, gives you a little bit of extra damage, a little bit of extra resistances, but you don't need it as well. So really just focus on attack speed and critical strike chance here. Then um, as our aspect, we use um, Frozen Tundra here. Um, this is mandatory. Okay, if you see a Blizzard build not using this, and I know they exist, I have seen a lot of these, just scratch it right away. Okay, this aspect is mandatory. You need the extra explosion radius, period. Without the extra explosion radius, you're going to be, like, terribly inefficient. It is not good. I know you could put another 25% damage on here, but just don't do it. Believe me, play this aspect. This is mandatory for every Blizzard build. 
Then um, for our pants, we use T-Bolts. Um, you don't have to use T-Bolts if you don't have it, but it just synergizes very nice with this build. It gives us damage, it gives us resource, it gives us resource generation, it gives us damage reduction, and it also gives us multiplicative damage. So this is pretty much the perfect pants for Blizzard overall. If you don't have it, again, you can just use a regular um, pants here with defensive stats again. Um, you're just going to lose out of a little bit of damage and a little bit of resource generation. It's not mandatory, but it's great to have it so if you're starting playing blizzard and you don't have it don't sweat it you can play regular pants but at some points you want to get t-balls but the build definitely works without then we have asus this is mandatory pretty much for every sorcerer build unless you really want to play flicker step so i really like would recommend farming asus um get those varshan kills get yourself an asus this is gonna boost your build tremendously okay this gives us a lot of crit chance and crit chance is really what we need in this build um focus on high movement speed and high critical strike chance the other ones mana cost reduction movement speed and so on they don't matter so you really want to have the high base movement speed movement speed after killing elite critical strike damage not so important mana cost reduction not so important critical strike chance very important here then for our um, wand, we use a conceited aspect here for more damage, and then we pretty much always use all stats, intelligence, and two damage stats. Um, in this case, you probably want to have like damage to crowd control is alright, damage to burning is alright, vulnerable damage is alright, critical strike damage is alright. You know, damage to distant is not the best, but you know, in the end, it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, you definitely can play a dagger if you want. I feel like it's still not worth playing daggers at all. I know you get like a 30% extra damage to close, but, you know, 15% lucky hit chance is still superior, even if we don't play any lucky hit at all, other than um, elemental attunement. I still don't really play daggers. I don't pick them up at all. That's why I'm playing wands, basically. Then for focus, um, I'm getting Shredding Blades here. You can also get Aspect of Control. It's kind of personal preference. I like Shredding Blades a little bit more. It's a 25% multiplicative damage here. Then you want to have Critical Strike Chance, Mana Cost Reduction, Cooldown Reduction, and probably Intelligence, right? We don't need the resource generation here at all. So really just get um, Percent Intelligence or Damage Reduction from Burning is also a nice stat you can have on here. Then for Amulet, you want to get... Movement speed, mana cost reduction, ranks of devouring blaze, percent intelligence. So I have a frost grill damage roll on here, which is like completely useless, and I have a terrible movement speed roll. So high, mo high movement speed roll is important in this build. First of all, it gives you more damage with Asus, so it gives you more crit chance. And also, we are playing Blizzard, so we are not teleporting all the time, so we are going to be slow. So try to get a high movement speed roll, that's very important. Devouring Blaze is the best passive you can get. You can also get Horfrost, which is fine. You can also get Glass Cannon, which is fine. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't go for any other ones than these. These are probably the best ones you can get. And then you want to have the Glacial Aspect on here. You want to have a high roll. Mine isn't perfect, so I'm kind of missing 10% damage here right now. But... Um, if you get a 925 gear and you get as close to maximum damage as possible, because this is going to be your base damage and everything is going to scale with this. So 3.3k is not bad, don't get me wrong, but 3.6 would be much better. And usually you can find these aspects with a high roll. Um, then for our ring, we play Storm Swell Aspect. Um, again, more damage. Then you want to have crit chance, maximum life, resource gen, and critical strike damage, or any other damage that here is nice. Um, we don't need lucky hit in this build at all, so you can pretty much scratch this for us that anyway. So if you don't have the proper gear yet, again, it's not super important um, if you have the 4 out of 4. 3 out of 4 with critical strike chance, max life, resource generation is totally fine here. Then Tarasha Ring. Pretty much a no-brainer. Um, the stats in here do not really matter at all. Um, it's nice to have high cooldown reduction, high resource generation, um, and have like the high 15% here. But, you know, like a chance, resource generation and generally don't matter at all in this build. So if you want to play Uber Uniques, let me just talk real quick about Uber Uniques. So if you play Shaco, just play Shaco. It's going to give you more defenses. It's going to give you more uptime on your defensive abilities. Teleport cooldown is lower and so on and so on. You're going to do a little bit of less damage, but definitely if you have Shaco, play Shaco. Then the second Uber Unique you can play is Starless Guys. So also this is a no-brainer. Starless Guys, just switch it with your Stormswell um, ring here or, you know, 
these like effects are pretty much all the same, right? Vulnerable, damage by barrier, storm swell, you know, they're all like pretty much the same. You know, the one is a little bit stronger, but you know, this is pretty much extreme min-maxing. So if you have starless guys, just play it. And if you have starless guys, you don't need mana cost reduction on your amulet. You don't need mana cost reduction on your focus. So you can, for example, get int all stats on your focus. On your amulet, you can get percent intelligence and you know, any other kind of offensive stat here. Um well, probably like additive damage won't really matter, but you could also get defensive skills if you want. Like you can get um, a lot of stuff on your amulet instead of mana cost reduction. So really you don't need mana cost reduction if you have Ring of Starless guys. For the construct, as you can see, I don't use any uber stones in this setup. You can definitely use them, but I don't use them at all because I don't want to make guides with uber stones at all. Um, if you don't have them, this guide is not going to be very beneficial to you. So we use Flash of Adrenaline with tactical support and initiative support and duration support. So this is pretty standard. Um, if you want to use um, Evan, uh, if you want to use Genesis, um, you just switch it for the initiative support, right? And you're good to go with Genesis here. Um, again, absolutely not mandatory. For the other skill, I use Tempest um, for the high attack speed with arcing support um, for it hitting more enemies with breaking support so we get a little bit more vulnerable this is a little bit of a weakness and with resource support if you have starless sky or you feel like you don't need the resource support at all remove it and again if you want to use uber stone like if you want to use your ever knight you will probably switch this for the resource support or the breaking support kind of on the situation right for the bosses you won't need breaking support at all um if you have like a lot of like aoe scenarios you probably want to use the breaking support you know something around that Okay, for the Paragon, we go pretty offensive in this build. Um, so on our first board, um, we can play Winter. And what I like about Cold Builds in general is that we can play Winter. So like these 125% uh, bonus to our rare nodes, these actually do quite a lot. So and Winter is an extra one we can use. Not only it gives us 15% multiplicative damage, it also gives us, as you can see, 25 non fills 7.5 resistance, and 25% intelligence. So all these... Um, Notes which get buffed by these 125%. Um, it gives us a lot of additive damage for the non fist damage. And the 25 intelligence, don't underestimate that. It gives us extra resistances. And it also gives us another 2.5% extra damage here, right? So moving over to the first board. Um, this is Enchantment Master. We just pick up some non fist damage and max life here. And then we put in our Elementalist Glyph for 15% extra damage. And also like the extra non fist damage and boost to all resistances here. Then moving over to the next board, that is going to be the Burning Instinct. We pick this with Tactician because this gives us again another 25%, uh, 25 intelligence and we get um, extra bonus damage to burning and extra damage reduction from burning here and also gives us another 10% multiplicative damage after casting a defensive skill. And again, we pick up these nodes, so these get nice buffs from the glyph here. Then we pick up the um, armor and damage reduction from elites nodes here. Um, if you don't really need the damage reduction, you can definitely redistribute these points towards like some more damage, like somewhere for example here in the non-first uh, department. Then moving over to the next bot, that's going to be the Frigid Fate. Um, we picked the legendary note. Unfortunately, I only have 22%, but you know, that's pretty much all right for me. Um, we put this bot a little earlier so we can get the bonus for the vulnerable damage reduction and also the vulnerable damage here. And we put in our exploit glyph. Doesn't really matter the additive damage. We just want it for the extra 10% multiplicative damage here. Then moving over to the next bot, that's going to be the elemental summoner. We just picked this for the glyph slot. So we use stalagmite. Um, I know a lot of people don't use it, but since we are playing Blizzard and we are like primarily just doing ice spikes damage, the 10% extra critical strike chance to ice spikes really matters. Um, the extra damage also is nice. It's a little bit of additive damage. Um, it's also an intelligence base. So in general, I feel like this is a pretty good glyph. If you really don't want to use this, you can use another glyph here. Um, I think we don't use flame feeder. Um, which is probably a good alternative here if you want to use Flame Feeder and, you know, redistribute the points a little bit. You can definitely do that. But I feel like um, Stalagmite, um, the extra 10% crit, gives me the most in this build here. Then moving over to the next board, that's going to be the Searing Heat. We just picked the Glyph Socket here. So this is going to be Control with 39 Dexterity. 
Um, this gives us a nice damage bonus to um, stunned and frozen enemies, which is going to be our main damage multiplicator. Chilt is going to be instantly when we cast Blizzard, so the 10% we pretty much always get until um, unless we are fighting bosses. And then it gives us 20% pretty much most of the time and also gives us a good amount of additive damage here. And then let's move over to the next board that's going to be the Ceaseless Conduit. Again, we just picked this for the Glyph slot. Um, we just pick a Destruction here with 44 decks. So this gives us extra damage, um, extra critical strike damage, and also gives us extra 12% multiplicative damage here. And then, last but not least, um, we pick the um, Icefall. We just picked the Legendary Note here since this gives us 15% increased damage to Vulnerable. And also, it gives us 30% um, increased damage to Frozen here. And then, we pick up this uh, little bit of extra Frost damage here. And we pick up the Chill application. Um, chill application is actually pretty strong, so I wouldn't skip these nodes. Like, they actually make quite a bit of a difference here. You want to have your Blizzard chill and then freeze stuff as fast as possible. So it really helps to get this extra chill nodes here. There you have it. That's my classic Blizzard build for Season 3. I hope you like it. Thank you so much for watching and I see you guys in the leaderboards.